Welcome to Everyday Economics, a podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. You can check out all of our great podcasts at americastalking.com. To support Everyday Economics and podcasts such as this one, please make your tax-deductible charitable contribution by clicking the link in the show description. We're recording this episode on Wednesday, April 12th, and joining me as always, my friend and colleague, Dr. Orfe Devangi, PhD economist. Dr. O, every once in a while, I like to check in on the real estate market and try to make sense of what's happening there. I have this far-fetched fantasy of some point leaving the great state of Illinois. I'll continue to dream and I'll keep you updated. You've been saying that for as long as I've known you, Chris. I know. At some point, I will. Oh, I will. I will make it happen, Captain. In the meantime, I look at you know sites such as Zillow.com is as kind of like the same way that my daughter looks at uh, HotTopic.com. I, everything there is fascinating to me, and I have to have it all. Right. Anyway, I was just looking in, at, at sort of what impact mortgage rates have had on the current situation. Thinking back to when I was probably hottest and heaviest in terms of making a move. In fact, making offers in in places uh, outside of the state of Illinois and being turned away by insane amounts of interest in the real estate market. So at at any rate, today, uh, the interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage is 6.5%. And so I was looking at these properties that were happened to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, and they happen to be about 400,000. They are exactly listed at $400,000. Same house. And so, and I just ran, randomly picked this. Raleigh's kind of an interesting city. It's a city that, or that market seems to be kind of on the rise. A lot of people that are moving there might be maybe the next Nashville. But my goodness, you know, the difference between buying this now and buying this a year ago when mortgage rates were down is not insignificant. On a 30-year fixed mortgage, this home, if you paid the full asking price and, and you and you put 20% down, which is $80,000, your payment today at 6.5% is $2,485. And that's all in. That's your property taxes, your home insurance, your HOA fees. Had you bought this house a year ago, it would have cost you $1,811. It's a $675 increase all on the financial instrument required to purchase it in your mortgage. Talk to me, though, about what's really happening in the market. What, what are we not seeing? The typical mortgage payment, right? So this, the mortgage payment, you know, 20% down on a typical home in the U.S., is up 48% when compared to last year, right? So like those monthly costs have increased a lot. And even though prices might have come down a little bit since their peak, mortgage rates just shot up. And that increase in mortgage rates from like 4% to 6.5% is huge, is huge. And so I think that's what people should really be paying attention to. $675 a month. I mean, you're, you know, you're talking... You know, thirteen thousand dollars, or what would that be? It will cost you a lot, thousands over the lifetime of the loan, exactly. And so that's why when mortgage rates go down, lots of people rush to refinance, right? So what's going on in the housing market? Home buyer is not as quite as strong as it was a year ago. But even though that's the case, buyers actually returned at the start of the year, motivated by the fact that mortgage rates actually ticked down from September. I think we're, we were well above 7% a few months ago. You know, mortgages have ticked down quite a bit. And also you have these seasonal factors. I think, you know, yes, mortgage rates fall into your constraint, right? Into your budget constraint. Right? You're like, okay, can I afford it? Right? Yes or no? But ultimately, people don't move because of mortgage rates. People move because of their circumstances. And what we know from research is that people don't necessarily stop themselves from moving altogether and don't buy homes when mortgage rates increase. They just delay the purchase. And so that's what we tend to see. When when prices increase, when mortgage rates increase, people tend to delay the purchase. First of all, only higher income families move more than lower income families. Well, that makes sense because they tend to be the ones that can still qualify for a mortgage. And at the same time, younger buyers take a step back and they wait and they wait until conditions are a little bit more favorable. And so you see the age of first time home buyers kind of creep up when things get a little bit tough in the market because of higher prices and higher mortgage rates. And you see the income, right? So income, age, of first-time home buyers tends to creep up as a result of these types of conditions. And so so that's exactly what is happening. Now on the seller side, sellers have little incentive to trade their low mortgage rate, 4% outstanding mortgage mortgage rate 
for the 6.5% mortgage rate. And so you're seeing new listings, numbers, the number of homes coming on market, existing homes coming on the market down 22, almost 23% when compared to last year. I get those updates from Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com, you know, that tell me what my house is worth because I've fished around inside of the site. And, and I've been like, wow, you know what? It's surprising. I thought last year was kind of a mirage. And, and it appears that this year, with inventories being lower, even with mortgage rates being higher, that the competition for existing homes is going to be probably pretty good. That's right. That's exactly what's going on, right? Is there's not enough homes on inventory on the on the on the market, and so you're seeing that price. It's keeping a lid on price declines, right? So and, and, again, I'm going to put this out there because there's a lot of pundits on YouTube that were saying here yeah, the housing price crash of, is going to look like 2008. They were wrong. It doesn't look like 2008. It's well, in not, some markets, there's been a cooling. For sure. I mean, some markets are slowing down. Out West, right? We, we see this tale of two markets. I think there was a beautifully written article in the Wall Street Journal. It talks about the tale of two markets. I think it's Nicole Friedman. I like Nicole. She's great. You know, you see that in the West, you have an increase in inventory, of disproportionate increase in inventory, a decline in house prices because those markets were really, really expensive. It's a affordability is driving, is still driving the ship, right? It's still steering the ship. And so you see the disproportionately more expensive markets slow down more, but we're not seeing the price crash. We're not seeing the the 20%, the 30% price crash so many pundits have predicted. No. So, I mean, honestly, I think, I think we should, like as a disclaimer, if you're, you know, your favorite YouTuber has flames in the background, graphic flames in the background more than once a week, you might be getting catfished. (laughs) It's a lot of flames. Exactly. I mean, the world is not coming to an end. Uh, Let's just put it that way. And the the housing market, and and those people, by the way, out West are sitting on record home equity. Look, the the, the home equity is coming down a little bit with the price declines, but they have so much home equity, they're in very good shape, right? And so sellers are in very good shape in, in, in today's market. So that 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 kind of summarizes it all, you know, about today's housing market. Now, the, I guess the big question look, looking ahead is like, are we going to see these existing homeowners come back to the market and actually list their homes for sale? Because right now, new builders, builders, new homes are getting all the action. The share of sales that falls on, that goes to builders, to new construction has increased tremendously. And so builders are basically getting all the action this spring, 2023. I appreciate the insights as always for Orfe Divangi. This has been Chris Krug. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other quality podcasts at americastalking.com. 